Okay, folks, I'm still in bead mode. We're going to have another go with these little moulds today and make some more of these large hold beads. These are the ones I made last time. Oops. <laughs> there we go. To fit on European charm bracelets. So I'll put you the link for that video for those up as well on the screen towards the end in case you missed that video. So today we are not going to underestimate the power of glitter. So let's see what we can do just with some good old fashioned glitter. Mind blowingly simple little project for you. Right, let's get on with it then. I've got my ultraviolet curing resin here. And I'm going to just put some straight into the moulds. Now this bottle is on its last legs, so I'm hoping I've got enough to do this. Okay, so what we're going to do then is going to get this part filled up so as I can get the glitter in there. So I've got to remember to push the little stalk to one side before I put the glitter in and before I put the resin in, just because that makes it easy to make sure it's got right down into the bottom and not just formed a bubble on the top. Which I think we're there. I'm going to do them all. Let's do them all. Why not? You can never have too much glitter, can you? Well, you can. If it's in your washing machine or your hair or anything. You know what I mean. <laughs> so there we go. Now you can, of course, mix your glitter in with the resin as you put it in. But I think I've found with my recent attempts that actually it's easier to put it in after. So there you go. I'm getting any spillage off. Now, the reason for getting that layer in the bottom is simply because, let me just dry, pat that dry, it's simply because then you, you, you know you've got some underneath the glitter, which is good, basically. <laughs> so, here we are. So, this one, fantastic holographic looking stuff. And I am going to try pouring oh no i'm not i was just going to say i'm going to try pouring it straight out of the pot and then i remembered how badly that went last time i did it so i'm going to get it in one of these little paper cups and then i'm going to do that here we are look it can be slightly less messy we all know glitter is the devil's work it will go everywhere if you let it ah, that seems to have worked fairly well just turn it around make sure it's this side too now, I have tried mixing it in with the resin first. Um, trust me, this is the less messy way of doing it. You are more sure you've got it where you want it. Now, I'm going to do that with each of them. So that's the other beauty of using these pots. It doesn't stick to the pot. Um, yes, I'm just going to do this with each of them and we'll see what we end up with now this one is chunkier this is flakes can you see that's mylar flakes i'll put you a link for all the glitters except for these at the bottom of the screen uh, there in the description thingy um and the reason i say except for these is because this is just some random mix i've mixed up by emptying out lots of pots i had before so what i'll do i can't give you the link for this exact one but what I can do is give you some links for something similar. There we go. So I'm just pushing some of that straight in with the tweezers. As it's a lot chunkier, that's quite easy to do. Now what I'm going to, hoping to try to sort of emulate there is something like, where's my Swarovski one? Like this. That's sort of an effect. Well, it's never going to be quite like that, is it? But that's the idea. We're going for something that sparkles, basically. Clean all that off. There is method in my madness. Keep cleaning it off. I'm not going to get all of it off, I know. But it, I'm just trying to make sure that any the one I intend to get in each one gets in each one. Now, this one's kind of gold with rose gold. It's quite chunky, but I think it'll still pour. So just going in again, going to pull the little stopper thingy that makes the hole in the middle of the bead out of the way. 
so we can you know, theoretically so we can pour past it didn't go terribly well but never mind now you might be thinking well yeah she's going to end up with like a, a layer with the glitter in and yeah i am but what we're going to do is once we've got these filled up we're going to go in there and give it a little stir that'll also help to make sure that as many bubbles as possible as possible are cleared out of it now jewelry trends this year apparently blue is a thing so i have here maleficent from glitter stella which is like blue green all that sort of thing so let's have a go with some of that let's get a clean cup is beautiful yeah emeralds and blues apparently are in and also sunshine yellow so we'll be doing some sunshine yellow stuff at some point i just think this one will be rather beautiful uh another one we're going to use is my current favorite you'll have seen this in many of my videos I keep going to the same colors don't i i really ought to get out more <sighs> This one is called Cleopatra. Look at that. So let's go for this little guy here. Yeah, it's easy to pull the stopper out of the way with your thumb, I've discovered. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put plenty of that in there. And then there's one I forgot to get out, which is called Midnight Blue. Oh, there it is. Right, luckily it was readily to hand because of this fact of blue being in this year, apparently. She says like she's some sort of fashionista. Yeah, I watch YouTube videos. I have never been any good at fashion, but I figured if we were going to be making jewellery, I ought to know kind of what the trends are, you know. Getting down with the kids and all that. So I'm just going to clean this up, then top it up with the resin, give it a stir, and jobs are good. We're going to just zap it with the ultraviolet light. Now, there is a lot of glitter in here. And I would normally be putting a mirror underneath when I cure it with the ultraviolet to help the light go through. Um, I find I very often end up still having to zap, the, zap it with the light from the other side. So I should just be doing that as usual, only more so because I've run out of mirrors that are actually any good. They've all turned into gloopy messes from me doing this sort of thing on them. I use some plastic stick-on mirror tiles normally. Just stick them to my mat or onto whatever, like an old dinner tray or whatever I'm using. So there we go. Just wondering whether I'm going to stir these or not, actually. Might be interesting to see what happens if I don't. Now, don't forget, you don't want to fill them right up to the top because you don't want to end up having to sand off a load of the resin afterwards. So, as you can see, these are filling up rather well. I'm going to let them settle for a minute because I want to make, make sure it's got down through the glitter and there's not too much in the way of bubbles in there frankly in amongst glitter if there's a bubble or two you're not going to see it but all the same we don't want too many bubbles so here we go just going to give it a little bodge up and down and a stir then wipe it and then on to the next then we're going to just wipe the surface over because doing it this way should mean that the glitter's got pretty well mixed in Frankly, if it does all sink to the bottom or whatever, I'm not too bothered. I'm more bothered about just making sure it's all, you know, bodged around a little bit and uh, it's got a fighting chance of spreading. Well, you'll see that although I filled them right up initially, now I've had a poke in there, it's dropped down a little bit. So we're just going to wipe the surface off like that. Which will get the excess off. These wonder wipes, by the way, they're particularly good for UV resin. Um, I don't always bother with gloves with it. Sometimes wish I had, because it just is a rather sticky mess. 
but these wonder wipes do get it off your hands um, just make sure you do if you get any on your skin make sure you get it off before you you know go rubbing your eyes or anything daft like that yes i've done that sort of thing uh, and also before you get your ultraviolet light on it simply because if it it gets very hot when it's curing like most resins do and you do not want that on your hands trust me been there done that okay let's get the ultraviolet light on these then I'm going to give it a couple of minutes so I'll speed things up for you. A um, couple of minutes front, a couple of minutes back. Okay, we're back. Now, I did put my big light underneath it as well. I thought across the two of them, that sure is it going to be cured. Look at this big boy. He's not that big actually, look. <laughs> but it does cover quite a big area, which is really handy if you're trying to cure larger amounts i do have some of those uh, several in fact of the lamps that nail artists use as well but these are just handy and here we go da, da, da. as i said never underestimate the power of glitter look at that oops let's try and get the focus isn't that gorgeous that was the one that was just holographic glitter here comes the rose gold and whatnot one. And again, wow, look at that. Oh, oh. This was, which one was this? Was this Maleficent? I think that one might be Maleficent. The limps for the glitter as well. I will remember to put those below. Uh, Oh, that's the midnight blue. Oh, I say. See, the thing is, with um, if you're using ultraviolet resin, if you go in fast, you're going to stop the glitter from sinking, which is a problem with a lot of other resins. That is Cleopatra. I think you can see why I'm so fond of it. <laughs> and this one, I think, is the random shards, which work ridiculously well. I've used this one of these before. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, as I'm sure you've seen in my previous video, all you do is you pop the cores in. And the way I tend to do this is I get myself a little blob of ultraviolet resin. <laughs> yes, I need a new bottle. I'm going to put myself a little blob on here. If it eventually comes out of the bottle. <laughs> well, eventually. I did want to use up every last little drip of this before I go buying some new. Ah, here we are. Oh, oh no. I love the horrible noises it makes. There we go. So we've got a little blob. And all I'm going to do is get a brush and I'm going to go round the hole, just a little bit round the top. And I'm going to put the little cores in. Now, this kit with the mould came with the cores as well. Now you don't have to glue the cores in, they do fit pretty tight and because at this point the little beads are very slightly sticky still um, then, you know, they'll probably grab anyway but um, I just always think, you know, what's it we say in Britain? Belt and braces? Make sure it's definitely stuck Now it might be that the other side will need a little bit of sanding before I can put these in that being the case, that'll only take a second. But I am going to leave that until the resin is basically sat overnight. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. But let's just let's just zap these. It'll zap that bit too, won't it? Might as well get the bigger lamp on that. Yeah. So the other side might be a little bit rough because it will be the. Let's have a look at this one. Mm, that's not bad actually bit where they yeah I think they're going to be okay these the bit where the uh, you know the top of the mold right, let's leave that for a sec let's turn them all over and have a look yeah I think they're going to be okay yeah sometimes you can end up if you've overfilled slightly you can end up with a little patch there that's um there we are 
it needs sanding back, but it doesn't appear to be the case this time. So again, just the tiniest little bit. You don't even need to worry too much about going all the way around. It'll just give it something to grab onto. I think this side I will be a little bit more fussy about going all the way around because this is the side that was the top of the mould. So it'll give it a, a bit flatter surface to grab onto. There we go. As I was saying, never underestimate the power of glitter. <laughs> Nor how evil it is when it gets everywhere. We've all been there, haven't we? I did a funny a few minutes ago and just shot beads all over my lounge floor. Wouldn't have been so bad if we'd got carpets <laughs> on laminate floors. Blimey, they bounce a long way. Oops. That one doesn't want to go in and I have no idea why. Ah, there we are. Hadn't quite got it square on, that's why. Once we push them in, all we're going to do then is give them another, another good zap with the lamp and then we'll be back to take some photos for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to do a whole load of these things that you can put in beads type ones. Um, just because they're fun, they're easy and well, what could be easier than that? I mean, glitter, come on. <laughs> so, so far we've done beads, we've done foil. Those are the previous video and now we have done just good old fashioned glitter. So, there we go. I'm going to leave these in the window for a bit just to let them totally cure off. Actually, or shall I just put them under this lamp? I think I'll hook this lamp up for a bit. Let them really, really firm up. Let the stickiness go off. Here's the ones from the previous video, all made with the same, with the same moulds. And there we go. That little pack that I had of moulds and uh, the little cores looks like there's enough for me to make twenty beads with just out of that one pack. Then, of course, the mould I can use and use and use and use. Just need to get some more cores. Right, thank you for watching everyone. Look out for the next one. I shall carry on with these videos for you. As nor as I always say, I do request so. So let me know if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see me have a go at for you. In the meantime, thank you to, to those who subscribed. I'm just cleaning my hands up while we talk. <laughs> really appreciate your support. Those who haven't subscribed, please do, because then I can keep you informed of what videos I've got coming up. Don't forget there's a few freebies for you to grab if you scroll down my community tab as well, for those of you who have subscribed. And also over on my Patreon page, the link for that is below in the description, there are a lot more freebies that normally would be things you'd have to buy from my store. So lots of printable downloads and things like that, craft planners, artwork, things, uh, colouring pages, there's all sorts. So enjoy and I look forward to seeing you for the next video. Thanks all.